Good morning, neighbors. Sing Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it all for us, and we can rest assured in that. There's, as, as we've been talking the last few days, it goes far beyond uh, anything that we could ever pay. And I thought it was interesting, uh, the lyrics to that song. This is a very old song. I think it was written in the 1800s by a woman named Alvina Hall. Well, she wrote the lyrics, and she said, I was sitting up there in service, and then they're singing, and she said, I just, this thought came to me, Jesus must be our all in all. There's, he has to pay it all. And just our need for salvation became so heavy on her that she just took her hymnal and scribbled down these words. And 
and uh, worked it out a little bit later, you know, the exact wording that some of what we were singing. But she went to the pastor and said, you know, I wrote these words. And what was interesting, he, the pastor knew, he's kind of like the middleman, that the man, I think he was the organist, uh, his name was John Grape, he had wrote a tune. And the pastor was able to take both her, her lyrics, his tune, put them together, and, and it's the song that we still sing today. It's still a very popular song. And I think there was a thing at Asbury College when I was either when I was there or one of the videos saw of the move of God that went down in Wilmore, Kentucky. And uh, but I really like the thought, you know, we, we, what little we bring, her little gift, lyrics, his little gift of uh, writing a tune, and the pastor's gift to be able to put them together. And say, hey, this fits like a puzzle pieces, and uh, and it all just praises Jesus for what He's done. We are a body working together and put together. So I thought we'd read in Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 because it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. I like that, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. This teaching that came to you, it was not just by hearing, you know, just words. It really entered into your heart because you were servants of sin. And it is a miraculous thing that he can reach into a sinner who's so who may not even be thinking of the Lord or thinking of forgiveness of sins or even acknowledge what sin is, but you can be convicted and you can obey from your heart. Only Jesus can do that. We can sort of try to set up traditions and, you know, forms and try to get you to do certain things, but it really has to be something within you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to, and, and to iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. You see, when you're servants of sin, you're just you're free. You, know, you really have you don't even try to live a life like that. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. That's all I was going to bring. Yeah, I, I, it was going to take you to take you down, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end of everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And of course, I think almost every Christian knows that. For the wages of sin is death. That's when you live a sinful life. That's that's what you're going to be paid, and and you're just. It's never it just put you further in debt, it's, and uh, it's just going to take you further and further away. But that's why the song really. You think about Jesus paid it all, and I I really am touched by the first few lines when it says, "I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small," and I find great comfort in that. My strength may not be much; I am so weak, but I know that He can do it because. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. I will be your everything. I will give you all strength and all comfort and all these things. But you have to acknowledge you're just a child of weakness. You need to watch and pray. You know, you're not able to do this. But then, when at the very end of the song, I will lay all my trophies down. You know, everything that I accomplish in this wor world, no matter how wonderful it is, it's all due to what he has done and the strength that he's given me. So God bless you all and have a good day. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.